this episode 112 of Real Time. Welcome back here with me is D. Miles Tracker that got to stay home this time. OSG, how's it going, sir? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Yeah, good, good week. Like you said, got to stay home, which was a good benefit. Unfortunately, you know, didn't get to travel to Houston for the dash, but I stayed in Austin for Dynamo. So you know, win-win situation right there. I guess you can say in the dash, you know, you know, did what they did, but. It was good to stay home. Uh, some of the surgeries came out and stayed the weekend, so got to hang out with them on Friday night. Uh, so, you know, good weekend, man. Good chill weekend, and then, you know, all the games going on. And I CD in Arsenal this morning, as we're recording on Sunday. Ended up being a 2-2 game, so good game. Kind of crazy game, but that is what it is. <laughs> all over the place, but... Yeah, man, just having, just chilling. But you know, I guess I'm ready to get into this. We got, we got four games to talk about: two with Dynamo, one with Dose, one with Dash. So we'll see what kind of episode this is. You'll just have to listen to find out. <laughs> yeah, sheer amount of soccer and two games to talk about for Dynamo out of those four, uh, Wednesday and Saturday, and we got a lot to talk about. But we got to start with the Vancouver game first because yeah. It was a home game, so missed opportunities, and which was the thing that I was afraid of, especially against Vancouver. And and look, we already know this is one of the best teams in the Western Conference right now, and they've been playing very well, especially when we went over to Vancouver. Uh, and despite we, even though we got the win, we were in the right situation. We ended up just essentially stealing three points from them. So, but that was that four to three crazy game. Yeah. And, and yeah, I was like, I I feel like they're going to play the same game. They're going to look for the crosses. They're going to look for those individual mistakes. And they're just going to send over Fava Pico every single time because he he wants to score against the Dynamo very badly. And that kind of happened. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Fafa, you know, he uses his speed to his advantage. And, you know, he's, he's still, he still plays, but phew, that's... He's just a, a decent, okay player, and every now and then he pops into the spotlight. As you can see, if you follow him on Instagram, he'll, he'll let you know with his uh, his little self uh, reels. So, <laughs> but man, going into this game on a Wednesday night, uh, you didn't know what to. I mean, you did. You knew what to expect. You did not expect no rotation. You kind of were like, well, hopefully somebody gets to start instead of somebody else, just because let's get some rotation in. Nope. Ben's besties are Ben's besties, and they're Ben's besties every day. <laughs> every sorry, day. guys. Yeah, sorry, guys. You gotta. You want to start? You better hope the person in front of you is hurt or international duty or something right now. But yeah, you know, uh, no Ache Ache, so Coco gets to fill in, and then uh, you see it was Seba that started right uh, in yep. Coco's nat- natural I, I position. Yeah, yeah. Seba, Seba, yeah. Yeah, so Seba was the only change with with uh, Ache Ache missing, Coco dropping into his natural position, which was interesting to see for this game. That was something I was keeping an eye on during the game. But, yeah, man, uh, Vancouver, uh, it was one of these games you don't know what to expect. You're at home. You're not playing well at home. Other teams are parking the bus, and it's hard for you to score and get out with points, and they're able to counter and make and, and find that one mistake or that second mistake so they can win 2-1 to one instead of one nothing or tie the game, whichever. But so, yeah, Western Conference battle, Vancouver coming in, fighting for points, you know, and it it, it, it was a game that we expected. You know, we're going to have possession. We're going to we're gonna play our little tiki-taka. We're going to create some chances, and then Vancouver's going to get the minimum amount of chances and try to uh, take the best out of those opportunities. And, you know, Vancouver did. But, you know, it was one of those games <laughs> kind of played to the script pretty much. Um, and you, you mentioned it earlier, the only downside about the lineup is the fact that this was the first game without Achache, since, as we all know, he's uh, with a calf injury uh, for the next few weeks. Um, oh, like, well, yeah, hamstring. Um, hamstring, same thing, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> same, same thing, but some people don't, don't know, so well, everyone knows yeah. hamstrings. But yeah, but, yeah uh, for, first game without Achache, but as we all know as well, that also opens the door for Coco to play his his position where he excels at occasionally. And the one thing I remember about this game in particular was the first five minutes because I don't know if you remember the, the first pass that he sent to Dorsey on the other side. Like, he he wasn't even facing... 
the like a Vancouver side. Like he was literally facing backwards, and he did this like cross spin. Like he he was just like he did this like cross spin to like send the ball to Dorsey to the side where he was not looking. And I was like, okay, like he's he's cooking now <laughs> because yeah. this is his natural position. He's going to excel and. I was expecting this from him, so I, it's it's just great to see Coco just being in the position where he where he gets the most results out of, and he gets more on the ball too at the same time. So it's in and it's the way he plays is what we kind of we look we were looking for. And it's the Panamanian Coco Coco that we get. So this is fun, you know. Sorry that Achache is hurt and Coco gets to finally do this, but he's getting to play with Arthur. And uh, once once they kind of coincide with each other in the, in this new position, then it's going to be even better. And uh, you know, Achache comes back, you, you know, we'll be like, "Damn, leave Coco, man!" No, uh, but it'll be getting close to the playoffs too at the same time. So it's just it's a it's a good problem to have for Ben. But obviously, when Achache returns, most likely LA Galaxy will probably be the game that he does return. Uh, Coco's going to have to go back to the the unnatural position that he's playing right now. But, hey, I, I, I like the way he played. He played a good game. He, he looked good, more more uh, more on the ball. Well, he is creative. You know he's creative, and you know he can get out of trouble. He's not quite as good on his feet as Achiachi is, and I don't think anybody on the team is because Achiachi can get out of anything and just do it like he was just uh, chilling over there, like he's playing soccer against his kids or something. But, yeah, man, so – Hey, good to see him playing well in that position, and uh, good thing it's not long term. But yeah, something to look forward to in the future. Yeah, and one of the few downsides of this game was the the fact that our occasional problem of still building up the attack, doing these amazing passing sequences, and and just barely getting on frame this time, and for this game. Uh, especially in the second half, but for the first half, leading up to the, the penalty, like it, it was kind of looking like we're doing the thing of wasting more scoring opportunities again. That's gonna bite bite us in the end. And um, and yeah, look, we're missing a lot of players, obviously that that could definitely contribute to our production. But at the same time, it's kind of like we're not we're, we're not we're not fixing things like up front because we, we are. We're doing pretty good in a lot of aspects, but still, we're still having scoring issues. Only one shot on target this game, and it's kind of like, mm. <laughs> hey, it's like you said, it's a struggle at home when the other teams are parking the bus, and then we can't even find our friggin' striker in the box and get him on his feet to where he's free enough to take a shot, even take an opportunity. Uh, he's gonna have to be quicker and make quicker decisions when he's near the box like that to, to even get opportunities to shoot, or he's gonna have to lay the ball off every time he gets it right there. So he just needs to be prepared for it. Ponce, whereas we're talking, uh, <clears throat> and just be quick on it, man. Just quick on it, make quick decisions, and the lightning shot, lightning, lightning quick reflexes with those uh, shots on target, man. Make the keeper think, make the keeper rebound. You know, Dorsey's following up. Bossy will be sitting there. You have a Liu sitting there watching the game on the left side. So you might get a lucky rebound. Yep. And pretty much everyone, as we all know, they like the opponents is gonna go ahead and crash inside the box because we're always gonna look for that perfect pass to capitalize towards the end. And and that that one play that that involved Bossy to force the first penalty that it took like. Four or five minutes for the VAR check, just for the penalty. I I feel like that took too long for what it was, but but yeah, okay. it was a penalty, in my opinion. Yeah, penalty. Take it, take it for what it is. Ponce sucks at penalties, so well, I mean that's only one, yeah. but well, I mean that was a horrible <laughs> penalty, man. Horrible penalty. Yeah, I make it, it sound it like he didn't that he didn't make it, but he obviously he did make it. But she, that was a hor- horrible penalty, man. And the, and the keeper even guessed right, but he guessed so right that he passed the ball up and couldn't get enough hand on it because he was moving away from it. Like, come on, bro, that's how bad the penalty was. Yeah. <laughs> Got to work on that. And, <laughs> and yeah, and that that penalty was towards the end of the first half. Second half would start, and it kind of looked. Like the game was like slowed down a little bit, or at least the attack wasn't as as go- it wasn't going as much as it was in the first half, and and yeah, it, 
that, like I said earlier, it was pretty much just Vancouver looking for looking to send those players forward, not just Fafa, but also their wingers, their attackers, just to see if they could just uh, catch them out in a bad position. Um, Stupid Brian and, White. Yeah. I mean, luckily they found a break because they, they were able to find Fafa Pico or like Fafa make, made space, enough space to then make the cross and, and for Brian White to capitalize inside the box. Um, and yeah, it's just one of those goals that you see us conceding a lot and one of the things we, we got to fix because it's it's annoying and one of the few ways people can, all other teams can capitalize on us you definitely saw it coming and the freaking announcers were even playing ben uh you know, white up before he was even coming onto the field talking about can man goober do this can they make a difference can he get this can he do that boom, boom. he comes in and he does it so like whatever it played it played out and that's just what the fans expect in houston is a a draw, a nut wrenching draw, or a late loss, or a struggling win. But you know, we only have three losses at home all year. <laughs> it's it's the it's the yeah. draws that are it's the draws that are killing us, really, man. So it's yeah, you know. <laughs> we haven't we haven't lost a game in like over a month now, and yeah, it's just it goes to show the the just just how this team is performing right now, which is amazing, but. If you don't get those wins at home, like even if you have an amazing real record like we have right now, it's gonna affect your your playoff seating, and you're gonna regret it eventually. So it's, well, it's something crazy. we have to work on. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned it's crazy because we're sitting in sixth or seventh place after this after this tie against Vancouver, and uh, yeah. you know that's a uh, two. You mentioned two losses in after this game is fifteen matches. The only two losses. So everybody's looking back when they hear that stat, and they're like, "Man, uh, we, we only have two losses in fifteen matches, counting tonight. Like, how many draws do we have? Like, makes you really go back and look. Like, dude, we mm-hmm. feel like we haven't been playing well to have that kind of stat, which is nuts. So, you know, two went two losses in <clears throat> in fifteen games, and you, you take that stat going into to Austin on Saturday. Yeah, nine nine draws this this year so far. Jesus Christ, uh, he's he's in Dynamo, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. No, but but yeah, the other complaint I have about this game is how this game ended, because it felt like the last ten or five minutes, I wanted Houston to keep pushing for that second goal towards the end of the game to get the three points, and I didn't see a lot a lot of hustle or a lot of pressure for them to like push forward and i'm guessing they just wanted to give things in order so like vancouver didn't couldn't capitalize on that but at the same time we just wasted another opportunity for the full three points because for me like the west i saw they were just like in positions nobody was actually pushing forward whenever our defenders had the ball and it was disappointing because i wanted the, the three points here we we wasted our opportunity and it sucks. Yeah, I mean, well, credit to Vancouver. They were pushing and they pushed in the right way and were able to counter. And, uh, you know, and Fafa was had a sensu bean that and felt like he was a new, <laughs> uh, a brand new player there and was just making runs left and right. And they found, like you said, they found him in that space and he's got enough speed to, to beat Griffin Dorsey, <laughs> obviously. And get around that corner and be like, put that, like you said, put that ball there. And they push and they get credit for it. And, you know, and Dynamo couldn't, they couldn't uh, create that possession because Vancouver found a little tactical adjustment that was working for them late in the game. And uh, obviously it was an adjustment that benefited them. They, and they, they even tried to win the game. It was a surprise. But yeah, like you said, at home, we shouldn't be putting, shouldn't be putting ourselves in these situations. We should be finding ways to score and we should, uh, be winning these home games and it should be held in shell like it used to be, man. It's, it's, it's nuts how we're playing at home right now and how teams are coming into the stadium and bunkering down and getting lucky. Yeah. And, and getting our result here because it's still pretty tough to play in Houston. And we were unlucky to, I, I keep going back to that game against Toronto because I, I was, I'm still salty about that game in particular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but still like teams, it, all teams have to do now is just copy the plan that team whenever visiting teams have been doing because it's it's working for them and I just hope to make uh, he used to make and make adjustments on that because we need those home points and mm-hmm. I think we got 
two or three more home games this year. So two, it's two, two, two. We two, got yeah. New, New England during the week and LA Galaxy on decision day. Decision day, two, yeah. yeah, two home games left, and then we have the three road games at Austin, and then at Seattle, and then at St. Louis. So it's not not an easy one. Tough schedule coming up, you know. At, at Austin's a rivalry game. You're gonna call, you call it a rivalry no matter what. So you throw everything out. It doesn't matter if you're the best team and they're the worst team. That that game is gonna be a freaking game. Um, <clears throat> uh, Seattle, you know what Seattle is, and it's gonna be up in Seattle. St. Louis, you're gonna get a crowd, but they're not doing too well this year. But you know, uh, so we should be okay on the road right there. Home game against New England. Everybody wants to play New England, so hopefully that's not a trap game. And then, of course, Decision Day, Galaxy have already clinched a playoff berth. We're about to clinch, hopefully, pretty soon. So we'll see what Decision Day comes into and what what what, uh, what position we're playing for. I, I do trust we'll be in the playoffs, and we'll be looking for that Decision Day to get a to get a home home win. But like I said, you still got Austin coming up on Saturday, and everybody knows what kind of game that's going to be. Regardless, man. Psh. It's going to be nuts. Yeah, and I guess my, uh, before I move on to the next game, my own stupid question when it comes to this yeah. game is, how do we how do we avoid offsides? Because at this rate, we're going to be the offsides of shield champions. <laughs> well, you just put a shot collar on the you and, and, and you're good. The other ones that are offsides are usually pretty close and bang, bang, but Ali is always like, he, he, I watch him sometimes, and he's not watching the line. He's watching the ball. So he's just standing there ready for the ball, and he starts running. And dude, like, you're off, bro. Where the hell are you going? You're off. And they still play him the ball because sometimes they don't know he's off. They can't tell. So, you know, Aliyu is, is leading the team, like you said, towards that offside supporter shield. I think we're, what, in second place, right? Chasing some yeah, right Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah, so keep it keep it going, man. Keep it going, I guess. Stupid offsides. <laughs> trying to cheat. <laughs> you already got Western speed. Conference You're trying to cheat. Now. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep. At Western Conference <laughs> off, offsides champions. Yep. I'm sure we'll get more oh, yeah. as the season goes on. <clears throat> For sure. Um I'm ready to move on to the next game if you're ready for that. Well, you know, and to go back to answer your question, you know, I, I, the tiki taka, they're always looking for that next little pass, and they're not, they don't have their heads up a lot of the times looking for that over ball, that through ball, that, that ball that they need to play us over the top to Aliyu making that run, or even Ponce who's making a run to just, they're, they're just missing that sometimes. They're just trying to look for that next short pass and not keeping their head up sometimes. But whatever, that, that's, that's their problem to figure out. I just wish we could do that a little bit more and stretch the field as well, open up that midfield as well too. But whatever, that kind of answers. Yeah, we're we're, look, we're always looking for the perfect pass. Like it doesn't matter if we if we if we're looking for like the easiest play possible, we're just gonna make it as difficult as possible so mm -hmm. that play can just look as as shiny. I said we're in the highlight reel, so yeah. yeah. And that's on Aliyu who needs to recognize when you know we know the style, we know how we're playing, and, and as as a winger, you got to recognize when to start your run and when you can make that run too at the same time. And a lot of times he's making it too early, and the player's got his back turned because he's playing the opposite direction. <laughs> but whatever, that's on Aliyu. Aliyu have to figure it out if he wants to be a good left winger. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Yeah, man, we they. I think it's time to to talk about what happened in Austin now. Yeah, moving into Austin to, to not precap or precap that this game. We're zero and five going into Austin, and ever we've only scored four goals in our history in Austin. One of those being an own goal. Uh, Pasher with one. Shoot, I already forgot the other two, so not too relevant anyways. But uh, like I said, coming into this game, two losses in 15 matches now coming into this game. Uh, you have seven road wins, so you're one one road win away from setting club history uh, with road victories. So I mean, the storyline's set, man. Achi Achi, he's missing. Coco is going to play that position again. Uh, so the storyline is set. Going into Austin, Austin's reeling, and you're just – you need a you need a win on the road, and this is the this is the game to do it. And when you're coming down the final stretch, to give you a boost. So, uh, I'm looking forward to this game on Saturday, and uh, we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes. But 
Uh, like I said, I hung out with the Sergis on Friday. They were playing a lot of FIFA, a lot of Madden, getting prepped, getting ready for the big game, uh, having a few beers here and there, some pizza, and, and just getting prepped and ready to go. And then, of course, they showed up to the game. Uh, not too many uh, supporters traveled, unfortunately, for us. Wish more people would travel. It's such a good game to just travel to, and it's so close. And Austin, the city, is not a bad city to, to hang out in and chill. You just got to plan it right, but whatever. But, <clears throat> hey, get into this game, man. I was excited. I was confident. I even I even commented on We Are Austin TV that we were going to win this game 3-1 to because I felt that confident because of the way we play on the road. And I didn't expect Austin to sit back and, and park the bus. I expected them to play their game and try to attack us, and which which opens up the game and opens up our game plan as well at the same time. I believe that plays into our game plan. So I was very uh, wasn't nervous at all. I was confident coming into this game. But, again, like I said, you throw everything out when they when the blow the whistle. You got to play the game. got to see what happens, man. So, <laughs> But I was excited for this one, man. I'm sure you were as well. <clears throat> yeah, uh, we got two uh, two games, two Dynamo games in Austin this year. And I was particularly yeah. looking for this one because that was the last chance to play here, last chance to get a result out of Austin for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, the, a, a lot of people were talking a lot of stuff. And, and, and I was also expecting Austin to, to perform the way they did, or at least be patient towards the Dynamo because they, they understand our situation with, we're still missing starters, but we're still a pretty threatening team, especially on the road. Um, and yeah, and the the one thing I can say about this game is the fact that they got pretty close. Like they hey, got pretty. Yep. Austin's is sitting in eleventh place coming into this game. Like I said, not doing too well. They're having a sorry season. They're they're even just okay at home. Um, they're not that that good at home either. Um, as as you can see, when we were sitting in the stadium, and not all <clears throat> they're still considered sellouts, but there's a lot of open seating now, so people are not showing up. Granted, yes, the Longhorns were in town, but come on, you got a twenty thousand seat stadium, uh, the and the Longhorns were playing nobody, so there's no reason why you couldn't fill that stadium against against a traveling Houston team who you should be showing up for, making that place even more impossible to score in and play in but uh like i said 11th place uh, they get they get drusy rumors uh, leaving for river plate or monterey so yeah, they're, they're, they were dealing with that during the during the week uh, they did play a midweek game as well so they did have that as well uh, or they tied uh, coming in so they kind of i think in their locker room isn't isn't doing too well and and, and, and it's been showing for the way they play. But like I said, Drew sees that the talk of being transferred and the season's not even over. You can't even be transferred right now. It's just talk for the end of the season. But it's uh, like whirling up some, some some wind before this game. So they had that issue. But obviously he still started and is still a, a dangerous piece for them. And if he plays well, they play well. But other than that, Austin sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were still chasing – one of the last spots for playoffs, like even though they're still uh, way, way away from my wide margin, they were still chasing, and they uh, they obviously needed to win this game to keep those hopes alive. Yeah. Um, and early in the first half, they were definitely uh, trying to get that first goal up until like the fifteenth minute when Houston started to adjust and kind of bounced out the game. Um, and yeah, you could just see. What we've been talking about this whole year, what Austin was trying to uh, to look out for, those set pieces, those crosses, um, and pretty much try to find a way to make Houston players mess up in in silly ways. Um, they did get a, a few things going on their in their, their way over the course of the game. Eleven corners. Eleven corners. Yeah, <laughs> I was like. Man, that's too many corners. I don't like that. I I don't I don't like set pieces. I don't like corners in 2024 at all. <laughs> no, no. Luckily, we defended every single one of them. But yeah, yeah, giving them 11 corners. I mean, I think it was the first minute we gave them a corner, or or, or they had a good opportunity with a a shot from a goal. Steve had to make a save and. Like, so that's just how this game started. So, like I said, you throw everything out, the whistle blows, and then here comes Austin right off the bat and gets, a, gets an attack going. And 
it was kind of weird. Like I kept looking up at the stats and the possession was 60, 40. And I'm like, it feels like it's 50, 50. Cause it feels like Austin's had the ball more, but what it was, was Austin had was making better creative chances than, than Houston was. And it, that's what kind of, kind of swayed the, the balance of possessions. You may have more possession, but we were taking better opportunities. So yeah, it, it felt like it was a, it was a, a mixed battle, but, we were possessing. They were they were taking better opportunities, for the most part. For the until, like you said, until Dynamo had to make their the tactical adjustments finally started taking place in the second half. There. Oh, and right until they started balancing out the game, that's when Coco started to show up. And I'm not only bringing him up because of the of the goal in the second half, but I'm only bringing him up for the fact that. Austin recognized Coco like they they knew what this guy could do and they knew that he he was in the role where he excels at going back to the last game we talked about and For persistent in Austin yeah and and Austin ended the game with 15 fouls and I can promise you like half of those fouls or at least a little bit more definitely were because of Coco like they were trying to stop him at all costs because like from the from early in the first half th- throughout the game itself, they were just taking down Coco. Coco was taking a beating, man. Like they just kept fouling him over mm-hmm. and over, trying to get trying to get him to lose the ball and break the play. And he just kept going, man. Like he like he's just insane for this game. Like he was he was doing everything right there. And Coco sometimes gets mad whenever he get, he's getting fouled like that, and and it was yep. good to see that he wasn't getting up and being as reactive as he as he typically is, because you know he's in that leadership role right now, where he, taking over for for Achi Achi. Obviously, Arthur's going to be the captain of the midfield, and you're going to have Clark and Shiasinko uh, <clears throat> running the back line back there. So it's a you know. These guys are taking roles in a different place. So it was good to see Coco not reacting and getting himself in trouble and getting a yellow card back for retaliation. So, like I said, he was just getting beaten up. And, and you know, Austin took a couple of persistent infringement cards because <laughs> every time you found the referee would would either give advantage because it was a good pass and they would just clip him later. They just clip him in the referee like, all right, I'm going to stop this, man. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna recognize the foul here. <laughs> but, yeah, good Coco, man. And he looked he, he, – Seen him after the game in the in the in the tunnel. He looks good. He's not got no. It doesn't look like he got any bruises. He feels good. His hair looked great. So uh, he, <laughs> he he made it through the match. <laughs> yep. Um. Oh yeah. The first half was honestly going back and forth. I'd say like Houston getting more opportunities. Don Austin in the first half, and so it, it was scoreless. And second half will go. We'll be underway. Um, that's when I was starting to see like some flashes of Houston in the second half against Austin in Austin, and it's I was like, "Don't do it to me, man!" Like we've mm-hmm. we've been playing we're playing okay right now, so like I I, I ask you to don't, don't do this to me like at this moment, um, and yeah, like I I was I was scared for a second because it see it, it seemed that way. Well, like we said, second half, Houston kind of made the adjustments and was taking advantage of the game and, and for the most part, you know, had control of the game. And then Austin was able to make their adjustments and towards uh, the end of the second half there, they, they were the ones pushing and, and, you know, really putting the pressure on he, and just attacking. And uh, the corner kicks were adding up still in, uh, late in the game here, which was ridiculous, man. And uh, Steve was making a couple saves here, nothing too tremendous or anything like that. And, uh, you know, uh, they were they were pressing as well deep in their in our own half so they were trying to create and they were able to take over the game there towards the end and then you know it's uh they had this one corner and friggin they did a little bicycle i think it was more of a side volley I, I, it was hard to hard i can't even remember from when it happened but man hit the hit the crossbar and went out over yep. for a goal kick so like blast and that was the closest they were getting to to you know, scoring that goal, but man, that was the opportunity right there that they had. And then the universe says, okay, well, you missed your opportunity. Dynamo, take the cold kick, go down. And then you see off of ours, off of our corner kick, the ball gets played across. Eric heads it in. Coco 
with a little sit and bicycle kick. What a colossal. And we're right in line from the press box where we were sitting. We were right in line with that one. I actually recorded the, the goal, so I've got the video on my Instagram if y'all want to go check it out. Uh, yeah, it's still up there. It's not 24 hours yet. Um, oh, man, by the time you listen to it, it will be. Sorry. Uh, I'll put, I'll put it on my <laughs> I'll put it on my regular instead of my story. So uh, yeah, but hey, I, whenever that happened, we didn't. Uh, it was like beautiful, but thought the, the keeper saved it. And the next thing you know, you see that ball roll out from behind the keeper, and we're like, oh shit, oh shit. Yep. And then right there in front of our supporters too was the goal that they were scored that Coco scored on. Like man, what? A, and then it was awesome. I think he forgot where he was because he went to the other corner flag instead of to the yep. supporters, but that's okay. He celebrated. He had a good time. Uh, his family was there too, but his family was on the other side. <laughs> so with the next sitting close to the supporters. So uh, good for him. And that was friggin' awesome. And then it was just a relief for us to even just get the goal and have the lead at that point of the game, man. Uh, and proper etiquette. We threw kind of, we, we kind of held onto it a little bit. We just kind of hit the table and turn and fist bump each other in the press box because last time Austin made a lot of noise when they scored their goal. So it was yeah. our turn to give it give it back to them. So it was fun. Respectfully, we're allowed to handshake as far as I know. Obviously, there's no yelling, unlike how they celebrate their goals every time we're in the press box. So yeah. we just got to keep it professional. So. And it, it, it was like, well, honestly, like it was hard for me to contain my excitement because th that goal came in at the right time, and and no, uh, yeah, like it, we were, we were happy about that, and also not just the people in the away supporter section, but also, man, there were a lot of orange and purple jerseys in Austin mm -hmm. on Saturday, and yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people supporting this team right now, and so we're we're in a high. Yeah, and those colors stand out in all that green, the way they got everything's green in that stadium, and then your your all your people are wearing green, and then you see an orange here, it stands out easy. The purple a little more hidden because it's blended with that black, but then you got the orange numbers, so it pops and shows out. So yeah, it was fun just kind of looking around the stadium, at, at all the all the Dynamo fans and all the orange, and I found I found a couple of uh, split houses walking around, so that was that was fun to to see them. Austin and Dynamo fans, but man, yeah, uh, you know, atmosphere. But it does suck being in the press box because the press box enclosed, and then they have the yeah. they have thick thick windows, so we don't get to enjoy the atmosphere that y'all get to enjoy when you're sitting in the, the stands. We could hear it, but not to the manner of where you can feel it through your body. It's uh, it's being it's being kept quiet a, a hell of a lot too. So if, if maybe we would have reacted a little bit more noisy if we were actually could hear all the noise and just hear the fans even better because otherwise it was just kind of muzzled it was but it, you can still hear it a little bit yeah. especially from the always supporter section because i did hear them a few times yeah before the goal so yeah it, it was amazing amazing experience overall I just like um, sitting outside, like when we're at Shell, and you get to hear the outside, atmosphere. Yeah. You're part of the you're part of the stadium. Yeah, yeah. You're you're, you're playing like the play, the fans are, the players are. They're all out there in the in the weather. You're out there in the weather, and you're 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 doing your part. <laughs> yeah, and one of the few downsides about this game, and also one of the reasons why there were there was a lot of time added past the stoppage time that was issued initially was the fact that. Latif Blessing, he was up in the second half, but towards the 90th minute, like he he got a head injury. And the current status of him is still unknown, but I don't think it's that severe uh, as of we were, as of us recording this right now. So Yeah, it could have just we'll been the caution taking him out and seeing what's yeah. going on. But yeah, like Ben had no update. He said he didn't look well in the locker room, so uh that's not good. That's not good news. So it may actually be an actual concussion, but we'll see whenever uh, Saturday if he's on the availability report. And hopefully he's okay. Yeah, and we need him. Yeah, we need him a lot. <laughs> yeah, because he he did show up in, in that game as well up until that injury happened. So, but yeah, a lot of a lot of minutes. I think the game ended at the ninety seventh, ninety sixth minute, a little bit over. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, man. Water nothing Houston. Yeah, they were pushing. They were pushing. Real quick before we move on to the dash, one question that the, the fans, you know, of course, the fans being overreactive and doing their thing, which is natural. Jesus Christ, guys. Um, there are, <laughs> yeah, for real. They're already, they're already, you know, talking about Hachi Hachi has an option for next year, whether to take it or not. And can we get Coco into that position faster? <laughs> so I'll ask you that question, man. Where do you where do you stand on that take? Ache Ache out, so Coco can take over. Keep Ache Ache. What do you do with Ache Ache? Or Keep Ache Ache for next year, man. Keep Ache yeah. Ache. Like it's it's that simple. Like it's uh, obviously you can you can show numbers about this year compared to last year. Obviously, it's not comparable, but. You just look at how he plays and how he contributes to every game. Like it's, it's hard to debate against him. So yeah, yeah, uh, you gotta keep him for next year. Like, um, and look, and if things don't go, are, aren't like are not working out next year, we got options. So it, we don't have to worry about that. Well, you know, something like I said, the option. Is there is there a way we can decline the option and then sign him on a on another contract, a one year contract or whatever, and then he not be a DP? No. That would be the benefit. That'd be the biggest thing to do. Uh, I think yeah, he's yeah. he's not he's not replaceable like Ben keeps saying. And he's he's too good. I don't want him to play ninety minutes a game. That's something that we need to get rid of right there. It's just you know play him to play him till you need him, and then make your make your freaking sub, man. Obviously you got Coco right there, so you could drop Coco and put up. But all these other players in that you have that you you're, you need to get on the field a little more often. So yeah, good good problem to have for Ben. I say keep Ache Ache, get him off that DP contract on that option. So decline the option, sign him for one year, no DP. He gets to play, 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 and uh, you sub him out in the 70th minute, 75th minute, maybe 60th minute, depending on how the game's going, and <clears throat> you move on, you play from there. And Coco's just got to be a little more patient for one more year. You know, but he gets to play his position a lot more. And then when Ache Ache leaves, Coco's the mainstay unless somebody does come calling for Coco, which we'll just wait until that happens because we're not going to go down that road again. <laughs> yeah. At this point, I keep I just keep seeing the rumors and I'm like, yeah, I'll believe until I see it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, good win. We do have now Seattle on uh, Saturday at 930 at night. <clears throat> They are yep. sitting sitting right below us on the in the playoffs. So this this is going to be a crucial game. We're playing on the road, so uh, go up there and hopefully we can get out with a draw or get some points. Just get some points out of that game and, and maintain our position in the playoffs. So it'll be a good battle. We have a whole week off, no midweek game. They have no midweek game, but they were on a bye this weekend, so they technically had two weeks to prepare for us or a week and a half to prepare for us. So that's a benefit for them. So they'll be ready to play us in their house and we'll see what we can do. But, uh, you know, Seattle won't, like I said, nothing to anticipate there. Ben will play Ben's besties and we'll play the game. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't checked this. I might be wrong, but I think if we win this game, we, we got to clinch that or, whatever happens to Dallas next week. So we'll see. Yeah, we already did the win part and then Dallas was supposed to lose or tie to help us in. So we've already done the one yeah. part. Now anything Dallas loses one point anywhere, then we clinch automatically. But yeah, I think you're right. If we do get the win, that just takes the Dallas part out of it. And we just decided our own fate. We didn't need nobody else to do it because they didn't want to help us. So um, we'll just let them enjoy the, you know, the Hall of Fame trophies over in their little their little renovated stadium they're getting ready to get and uh that's about all they're helping us out with. Hey man, they got the seals lift the MLS Cup there, so you can you yep. gotta show some respect. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, that was Dynamo. Man. Uh, so so happy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. That was so. insane. And it was just, it was insane. And then, you know, of course, um, so your transition here is as we were watching the, the game in Austin, we were stuck having to watch the Dash game on our iPad and yeah. really wasn't able to pay attention to it and stay focused on the Dash game, it, it, you know, because we're at the Austin game. And 
But man, and then just seeing the availability report for that game, Jesus Christ, everybody's yeah. missing, everybody's out again. And luckily, two of those people that were on that list ended up playing. One started, one made the one made the bench. So, Jesus, yeah, uh, signed signed two players off the off the practice squad for this game announced on saturday morning so it's like we're not sure if we have enough players and we'll wait till the last minute and then boom hey y'all y'all girls are gonna play today okay <laughs> or you're gonna be on the roster okay i don't know if you're gonna play but you're gonna be on the roster kind of kind of situation so you have a you have a good 11 defense is what's hurting now because jacobs is in concussion protocol uh tarcy's hurt um, so you have Paige Nielsen, who's not 100%, who ended up starting. You had Jalissa Harris, and then uh, you had Chappie, who Chappie does not look fit at all and who's struggling to get into good form. So she was getting the start, which was a, uh, you know, so you're like, oh, man, this is going to be questionable. But, you know, it is what it is. So <laughs> coming into this game, man, wasn't not expecting anything to come out of this game in Houston. But then the whistle blows. Yeah, the one thing I was expecting is for Seattle to go all out to get a result mm-hmm. here because they, they, yeah, they, despite the recent successes for like the past few years, they haven't been doing good at all this year. And they were still chasing the playoffs. And I was expecting them to get a result out of Houston. And just the day before, I was just checking the availability report. And I was like, I- I'm so used to seeing the the all the players are out for so long this year now. Like I'm I'm or I'm already used to having all these players unavailable and some players questionable, and eventually we're just gonna sign signing players that, that on short term deals. And it's annoying, like because like. Again, no Fran Alonso. It's Ricky Clark's team still for the past two months now. And he's doing everything he can to keep this team together in the in the special situation we're at right now. And it's it's definitely annoying. I could if I was him, I would be very annoyed because of all the movements I have to do and all that. But the good thing is that Yuki started, which I, this is the thing that I was looking forward to this game. Yeah, I mean, who else are you going to start? <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so, so, uh, unfortunately, you know, you, you, unfortunately for me, for Yuki, it's not a, a starter for me, but you, you have no choice. You got a player, but, you know, she has been playing well too lately. Yeah, but at the same time, I've got other girls I want I want in there. You know, Sophie Smith banged up and wasn't starting, so that, that allows for her to get in there. You know, you've got Rubinson. You've got uh, Puntingham, who wasn't starting either, who's on the, on the roster. So, you know, uh, Yuki's doing something to get to get this playing time and this opportunities, and it just could be something for her to, to benefit her since this team is just nowhere to go. Put her out there and let her play. Let's see what she can do. And man, can she? She does it. She 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 plays her she plays her heart out, <laughs> and and you can see her heart on the field too. But after the games, when she's on her videos and talking to fans and all that, and having just fun with other players, man. Uh, so yeah, Yuki, there's your star right there, man. What? Yeah, um, I was able to see like the goal itself. We we're watching the the Dynamo game here in Austin, and it's like it, it was insane. And I wish I could just watch it full replay, but for some reason, NWSL Plus didn't have it saved. But I was able to watch the highlights, and and man, what a banger that was! I, I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. That ball just – it was a rip into the corner. Keeper couldn't do nothing. What a blast, man. What a blast. It was a Yuki bomb. It was a Yuki bomb, man. Yuki bomb, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I might have to go order me one of those from the bar now. <laughs> Yuki bomb. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out what it is. Uh, uh, but, damn, it was just a blast, and it was a much-needed blast, a much-needed goal. It gave the team the lead as well, one to nothing. Like, what? What the hell's going on here? We're missing a good game, man. We were missing a good game. But yeah. yeah, what a Yuki bomb goal of the week, maybe. I don't know. I didn't see some of the other goals from the end of the show from this weekend. But yeah, it's gonna definitely be one of the top four. It's gonna be in the running. And um, and one of the, the the things I wanted to watch from a re- replay is if there were any adjustments made compared to all the previous games that we had on the Ricky Clark. If you were 
like I don't know, I don't know, I'm not sure if you were able to see the game, but if you did, were you able to see like any adjustments, like mm. from this game that you felt like it was going okay, or was mm. it like Seattle not playing well? No, I think it's just a little bit of both. I mean, I, I, like I said, I'm okay with the eleven that are, that are starting. They're actually decent players. It's not like you're throwing in your practice squad into the starting lineup. You're throwing your practice squad into the into the the bench, and you're you're using the player. You're subbing in players who don't have much time. So it's one of those like, all right, how can these girls play? You know, they're gonna they're gonna get a lot of playing time. Seattle is not that big of a threat, but they are a decent team. Uh, you know, you, you, so no, I didn't see nothing that stood out out of the ordinary. It was just the girls were just trying. Avery Patterson is Avery Patterson, who's a friggin' beast <laughs> every friggin' game. And Dressa doing yeah. Dressa, Barb doing Barb, Alozi doing Alozi. So you know, it's uh, just the those those players just being their individual selves and that played played well enough as a team this time. So yeah, it's yeah just and, and better, Barb, yeah, better execution Barb is what it was. Yeah, no, you're right. That and Barb also got almost got a banger there, so it, it was gonna be two zero. No bias, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure, you say that every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, honestly, I'm I'm so happy they got these results. Like within, well, I've I've been I've been criticizing them a lot for like uh for the players. Like I've been criticizing them a lot for problems that are outside of their control um this was the first win in league play in over three months now and it i know it's a tough situation ricky clark's um, first win in league play yeah ricky clark's right. first first win yeah 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 like it, it, because yeah in league play because they in the summer cup i think i think he got a few but yeah he got those uh the, but yeah those really didn't count but yeah. in, in the situation you're in, but I mean, your first NWSL win is where I was going with yeah. that. No, you're right. Like it's, it's a, it's a big result. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, Ricky stepped in into a, a big problem that it's pretty tough to overcome. And like in the games that I've been able to see in person and, and mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. over here, I did see a lot of positives, but almost all those games, those ideas were in, completely covered or just like issues with like other teams just being much better or like informed, but I'm just happy they got this result and just for the team, it helps a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Just a great win to have a good result. The girls needed it. Like you said, and you know, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. It was good to see that Tarsi was at the game in the stands. Bachman was at the game in the stands. So that's a, a really good sign to see that Bachman's like, going to the games while she's not playing. That's whatever the team's deciding to do. But uh, it looks like she's still a part of the team and still participating with the team. So that's good news to see that she's actually going to the game and not hiding or anything like that. Uh, you know, it's because you're always looking for signs. Is that player going to stick around for next year or what are we doing with her? But, you know, so good win, good win. But, you know, this win, it's a, it's a, it's a good one to play off of because you're going to Orlando to play the undefeated Orlando Pride. <laughs> the the undefeated uh. Orlando Pride, who are in first place, and they're running away with first place. It's se seven <laughs> points is first to second. So, hey, there's no need to preview this game. Just can we stop the friggin' beast in Orlando, which, you know, there's not just one, but you know which one I'm talking about. And uh, Can we come? Can we get an upset in Orlando? All right, let's battle the Space Cities. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to tell you right now, we're still not mathematically eliminated from playoff oh, contention. Good. We're so not last place either. We're not last place either. So, <laughs> uh, look, it's hard. it's a road game. They could do okay. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna watch that game just oh, just for like always because I feel like something something is gonna happen. I don't know how to call it, but. I'm just going to watch. 
Well, things work out perfectly for y'all next Saturday because at 6.30, Houston Dash are playing Orlando in Orlando. And then at 9.30, Houston Dynamo are in Seattle. So, man, you've got a perfect watch party to do there. A two-hour Dash yep. game. You get an hour of halftime and then a two-hour Dynamo game, man. So, sounds like there needs to be a badass watch party next next weekend. And some people going to get a little bit blitzed. So, who's hosting the party? <laughs> but, yeah, tough one. So, Dash go. Beat Orlando somehow, get that win. That'll that'll be like. I really the hope cup. so. Yeah, that'll be winning I, the cup. Right I hope so. If they win, if because if they they beat Orlando, it's gonna break in Lewis Hill Twitter one hundred percent. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's gonna be insane. <laughs> and somebody's gonna <laughs> score that banger to to get it, get it on replay a thousand times, but. Yeah, man, so that's our Houston Dash. Nothing else to report. No other news to report for the Dash. They're just uh, trying to finish off their season. Like we said, next up is Orlando. We move. Uh, we're just trying to finish off the season on a good note, man. So I guess if you don't mind, why don't you take us into a Donna, Donna Dose segment and tell us, uh, did we get the trifecta for the weekend? That's what we were looking for. Dynamo I'm happy dub, to announce. A Dash dub, and what is it? I'm happy to announce that it's a Dana, Dana 2 dub. A dose dub. Boom. Dana dose dub. Dana yeah. dose dub. Dana and dose dub. Man, it was, it was against the Coral Rapids 2, a team that has been Last a place. pain in the butt against Houston this year. And it last place also in our conference. And it's this game, though, like it, it was all over the place in a, like in the first half and Colorado was doing its own thing and I was like man we need of all the games we need a win here we need a win now because obviously we're coming off the the result in Austin from last week and with only three games left in the schedule this was a must win and just gonna just going to back to the lineup really quick there's a couple things to to keep an eye on because Exxon Arso is back. So amazing. And Andy Batioja is available off the bench for the first time. So you're going to hear Andy Batioja again. So I don't know if you were able to watch the game. And, and, because... we, te- and we teased if you listened to the last episode uh, about yeah. Andy showing up to the team and Exxon Arzu returning possible return and we weren't sure about Exxon but yeah it was good to see him on the on the bench list when the when the lineups came came back and then to see Batillo on the on the bench uh, as well so that was uh excited to see both of them on the bench right there and then uh there was another one that started I think that was new as well wasn't there Barrett or I whatever think it was because yeah they know Barrett yeah and so, like he's yeah. he's also he's an academy player compared to them, but like I've been noticing that a lot of academy players have been getting opportunities, which is amazing. Yeah. So yeah, like it's it's just it's just great. Um the one thing I wanted to say also is the how the Morelli has been playing because I feel like the games I've been watching for two has has been like he's he like can be on and up in a few games. In certain games he can just like not play his own way, especially like I saw against Austin. But in this game, the Morale played play very good up until like he was subbed down in the second half. So shout out to Mateo. Yeah, man, he's playing. He's playing. <laughs> Little kids playing with his heart out there on the right wing, man, playing pretty well. He's giving, giving what he can. But looks like his time is up now. <laughs> it's, it's not, yeah. Exxon is back. <laughs> yeah. Exxon is back. Um, and yeah, the first half though, it it looked like Houston were about to probably get a, a few more chances in, yeah, compared to other games. And was Montezilla, man, once again just being that that pain in the butt for defenders, uh, opposing defenders, just throwing another penalty for Captain Diego Gonzalez to capitalize on uh, to get the mm-hmm. first goal of the game. So it's it's like clockwork. It's great. Silas just bowling out. Almost every game for those. And Diego Gonzalez, I think, I don't have the stats with me, but a ton of goal contributions. I think it's 
16 or 17 goal contributions now this year. That's Probably crazy. Probably more, but they, yeah. it's absolute insanity. Uh, first team watch confirmed. Absolutely 100%, but we have too many midfielders, man, so it's it's going to be tough. Yeah, so, yeah. When, so, you yeah. Say, when you say confirmed, it's confirmed, but what do you do with him? Where, where are you supposed to go with him? What, how do you, how do, you yeah. do it? But he has 14 goal contributions in league play. 14, five, yeah. Five goals and nine assists. So man, he's he's killing it there, right there, man. Twenty five matches, he's got a, a a a nice a nice overall rating for the year as well. As, but yeah, like, like Asher told us last week, like he's just just too many people in front of him for an attacking midfielder. But it's something to keep an eye on because it's not, it you know creativity is a need, and he he can create, he can create. But yeah, going back to Silla, that man's just got he's quickness, man. Just using his uh, speed on the ball. Getting around defenders and just his little burst—it's so treacherous. And it's when you know how to use your speed, you, you've got a major advantage in soccer. No, and I just love how he plays because he's gonna get like he's gonna get like a three team, four team, and a lot of those opportunities. And of course, that usually means that a player is gonna be open and there's gonna be an opportunity for Houston to capitalize on and. And yeah, Houston has been all over, all over this game, and that, that was towards the first half. Like Colorado will get a few more opportunities. Like he, they got like three free kicks, like in five minutes towards the end of the first half. So they, they were trying to get back into it. And after that second half would start, and towards the seventy fifth minute, a little bit over, we do get the the return of Exxon Arsu getting subbed in. And the debut for Andy Batioja, which is awesome. But as I said, Di Marley coming out. And I think the other player that came out was... I can't remember. The it. concussion. The concussion. Was it for the... Oh, yeah. The, the concussion stuff. Um, dang, I'm blanking out. But <laughs> Yeah, I, but, forget, no, I it, forget whose name is. I'm... Just moving on. <laughs> yeah, but well, yeah, like it's. I was like, okay, but Tio, I'm excited, man. Four minutes later, he scores. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was watching him nah, to see what he was going to uh, do uh, on the ball, man. <laughs> A hey. lot of people were hyping him up on like whatever I saw his name pop out on social media, and there was a lot of people excited for. Uh, for him, and I was like, okay, show me what you got. Goal in his debut in a few minutes, and I was like, that'll do. What a wicked bend, man, a wicked bend. And he was <laughs> he's definitely aiming for the goal, but, bro, he that was a curve ball right there at the ages that he took that shot. It was just so slow, and, like, I don't know if the, what the keeper thought, if it was going out or whatever, or just w whatever he thought, but, it, like, right in the corner and goal. Like, and I don't think he expected to score that, but he took the shot. And, bro, what a curveball. Beckham didn't even have a curve like that. <laughs> yeah, and that was the 82nd minute. So, two to nothing there. 89th minute, Colorado will get a goal back. And I was like, uh, don't do this to me. No, <laughs> no, don't do this to me. Um, and yeah, like overall, Houston did, did play very well. Like, they held on to the score. And, they got the dub, which is what we needed, absolutely, uh, with now two games left of the schedule. Puts us we back are, eighth. Yes. And Puts. so we're still in the playoff picture, which is good. And we're just fighting for those wins still because Vancouver, which is a team that's above us, they have uh, three points. So we got to win out if we want to either keep those playoffs hopes alive or – at least find a cushion towards decision day. So it's it's still it's still a good race, and the, the team has to win out all the games now. Um, yeah, I'm we're not, not even worried about seventh. <laughs> the, the race is for eighth. We're sitting in eighth at thirty six points. Portland with thirty five points. Austin with thirty five points as well. Uh, Sporting KC with thirty four points, and then twelfth place RSL or Real Monarchs with thirty one. So we'll, we'll, that's four. Yeah, what is that? Four points. Five points. 
from 12th to 8th. Five teams right there battling out for one spot with two games left. So technically, um, yeah, man, there's anybody, anything can happen. Two games left. So you, you need to go into those games trying to get six points out of those games and just confirming you're going to make eighth place because uh, whoever uh, those five teams wins both their games is probably the team that's going to make the playoffs. So it's crunch time, man. One road game, one home game left, I believe. So we'll see what yeah. happens with, with a buy-in there well, as well, too. And you're not going to like the opponents because they're annoying oh, yeah. as hell. Uh, the, our next game is against Tacoma. Our good friends, Tacoma Defiance. Yeah, Jesus. The, I am so tired of them. I, I hate them. <laughs> uh, we need to win this game. I don't care. Like, it's it's just, I'm tired of fa- playing them and losing to them. It yep. sucks. <laughs> yep. And yeah. And then the last that's, opponent is? Uh, Vancouver Whitecaps, too. The team's, that's above us. Mm, so yeah. it's uh, a lot to play for. <laughs> All right. Well, they know what they need to do, so it's going to be hard. But we'll we'll, we'll be paying a close attention and uh, <laughs> keeping y'all updated, and we'll see. We'll see if we can get some playoffs. But Arzu's back. Andy Batia is, is just is now playing. They got two games left. Um, so let's make the playoffs so we can get them more playing time and see them play more <laughs> for damn sure. Uh, otherwise than that, they're going to have a long off season. We don't want to. We don't want to do that to them. Right. Uh, that, that's what I'm saying because they're not gonna be playing for the first team, and we just gotta see them play more games. And, and look, we're gonna get that that third uh, consecutive playoff appearance. So it's yeah, we're yeah. playing for a lot of things right now. Yep, one hundred percent. But yeah, uh, man, as y'all see, we're out there trying to do what we can to to bring y'all everything. Uh, you know, last weekend we hung out with DFTB at the Dose game in Austin. This weekend, we hung out with DFTB and, and uh, Bio City, who traveled up to Austin to, to watch the game in the, in the press box. So that, that was good to, to hang out with them. Um, you know, we got the Longhorns got their win on Saturday night as well. Uh, we're leaving Austin with the win and, and making them hate us even more. Uh, <laughs> sh- shout out to Hernan from We Are Austin TV. He reached out to me after yep. the game saying congratulations. So that, that was cool by him. <clears throat> you know, so hey man, uh, we, we move, but good week. We got the trifecta. We'll take the draw on Wednesday, so that's ten points total in four games. Ten points. So Hustle Town, the H Town weekend gets the nine points, and all three teams get the dub. So I'm happy. We're gonna sleep well tonight. Yeah, no, I I slept happy yesterday. I'm sleeping happy tonight. And um, yeah, I know a lot of coworkers are not gonna be happy. Uh, for the result, because a lot of them are Austin fans, but we do have health, healthy banter going on, so it's not nothing personal. But it's just, it's just interesting how it's gonna work out this week. Losers. <laughs> no, yeah, guys. We, as always, we do appreciate the support, and every time you interact with us on episodes, like questions for for episodes, and just giving us feedback, it goes a long way. And as usual, if you're able to share our podcast, our our work, blog posts and all that, that'll go a long way for us. And we do appreciate it. And as always, we do share that information on Twitter, at Dynamic Foxtrot, at Noodle Tiempo, and, and our coffee page uh, at ko-fi.com slash Dynamic Foxtrot. That's ko-fi.com slash Dynamic Foxtrot. And also Gold TV. We put all... all Pretty much all the videos that we can post on YouTube usually goes to Ghost TV. So it's a good platform. We haven't checked it out yet. Uh, a good place to meet out other soccer creators around uh, U.S. and Canadian soccer. So I highly recommend that. Yeah, so, man, hey, you know, we got decision day coming up for the Houston Dynamo. Uh, so I got a, a, I got a giveaway for y'all, but it's going to be a hard one for y'all to, to, to succeed in, man. So anybody you can tell me how many times Andrea said and during this episode – I'll give you two two seats to to the, the decision day against LA Galaxy, and hey man, so, and, so. and and <laughs> I'm telling you, and and stands oh for this. That's what I'm telling you, man. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> so he's, he's throwing his name in, in, in every every. <laughs> so, all right, but yeah, so good luck if you're a counter. You're cheating already. So. <laughs> 
but <laughs> hey, we'll see if you can come close to the number. <laughs> but hey, <Yeah. laughs> but there you go. <laughs> and I think it's time to take us out of here. He gave our socials. He, he told us what to where y'all to follow us, man. So we'll see y'all. Uh, we got a week till till we uh, got games again. So. We'll see. You got Dynamico. We'll probably come out later this week. So y'all look for the Spanish version. And we'll see if we are in the mood to talk to some Seattle folks and give y'all a preview for the Seattle game. But we'll let you know. Yeah. We'll see. Move on. The Discord's yeah, happy right now. Always. Yeah, I'm I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, guys, I thank you so much for tuning in and staying with y'all. <laughs>